Hi, and welcome to an in-depth, behind-the-scenes look at the 1997 movie, Breakdown, starring Kurt Russell, Kathleen Quinlan, J.T. Walsh, and other stars. The movie was directed by Jonathan Mostow, and also written by him and Sam Montgomery. Jonathan Mostow got the idea for the film while driving through Las Vegas with his wife. The film was released on May 2nd, 1997 by Paramount Pictures. It had an estimated budget of $36 million and took over $50 million in the United States and Canada. Dennis Quaid, Bruce Willis, Ed Harris, Mel Gibson and Richard Gere were all considered for the leading role. Kurt Russell was helicoptered in and out of the areas of shooting so he could be with his family in Los Angeles at night. MC Ganey said that Earl was the darkest character he had ever played in a film and regretted it afterwards. Kurt Russell has starred with J.T. Walsh three times before. In Tequila Sunrise in 1988, Backdraft in 1991, an executive decision in 1996. After Earl pulls out in front of Jeff in his truck, he confronts him at the gas station. The place in real life is an RV and campsite, and the camp's general store is still there. Jeff and Amy continue on their journey before their car breaks down. Earl passes them, blaring his horn, and stops down the road to watch the proceedings. Red, played by J.T. Walsh, turns up in his truck. I think this was one of J.T. Walsh's best acting roles and he really played the part convincingly.
Amy, played by Kathleen Quinlan, accepts a lift from Red. After Jeff manages to get the car going, he heads to Belle's diner to pick up Amy, only to find out she's not there. It's remarkable that this place is still standing after all these years, and the tree is still there. I think the phone that he runs to would have been a prop put there by the film crew. Then he meets Billy, played by Jack Noseworthy. Jeff heads up the road and sees Red's truck driving off in the distance. He flags him down and questions him, from which he swears he doesn't know anything about it and he's never seen him before. Jeff is chased by Earl in his truck and smashes through the gates to get away. I think the gates may have been put there as a prop for the scene to add dramatic effect.
Earl chases him down the track, up to the old limestone quarry. Jeff escapes by driving the jeep into the river. From these shots you can see that it was a stuntman doing this. Jeff makes his way down the Middle Fork American River. Some of the scenes would have been done by Kurt Russell's stuntman, John Casino. John is a personal friend of Kurt's and has been his stunt double since August 1988. Kurt Russell did some of the action sequences, which is great to see. Earl and Al then retrieve the jeep, so there's no evidence of Jeff's whereabouts. Red and his men tell Jeff that he has got to go down to the bank and withdraw $90,000 or he won't see his wife again. Brackett wasn't a real town. The actors were actually stood in front of a green screen. I think they did a pretty good job of the CGI considering how far it has advanced now. Jeff arrives in Brackett, which is actually Victorville, California. After collecting the money, he walks nervously down the high street. The phone rings and Jeff answers it. Again, I'm not sure whether it was a real phone box or prop 
as it's not there now. Jeff walks towards the rail crossing with money in hand. In reality, Victorville, where the bank scene was filmed, is 151 miles down the road from this crossing at Nipton. I think this scene is really well acted by all three actors and a standout part of the film. Rex Lynn was really believable as the cop as well. Jeff makes his getaway. The truck stop scene where Jeff finds Red on the phone. Again we see Kurt Russell doing part of the action sequences with stuntman John Casino taking over the dangerous sections when the truck is actually speeding along the road. When Kurt Russell is climbing up the side of the truck, we can see the speeding road underneath him. They actually used a treadmill, which they painted white lines on and then used a large fan to blow his hair and clothing around, to replicate the speed of the truck.
shackles up at the ranch, with Jeff hiding on the back of the truck. The Thornton Ranch has been used in many films, TV series and commercials over the years, including 24, The X-Files, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Westworld. After gaining entry into the house, Jeff forces Red and his gang to set Amy free. I think the scene where Amy is down in the cellar, locked in the freezer, was probably a studio set. As from the pictures of how it looks today, you can't see a hatch. Red attempts to run Jeff and Amy down before they escape. Jeff and Amy try to get away from Red and his men after escaping from the farm. Then we have the climatic scene at the end of the movie where Jeff and Red fight on the truck that's precariously teetering on the edge of the bridge. The bridge is just off the Golden State Highway. It's only accessible by foot and it can't actually be seen from the road. The scene where Kathleen Quinlan moves the truck's gear shift to allow it to fall is in the US DVD version and the new Australian Blu-ray by Imprint. But in the German DVD version, this was cut. The truck just crashes down by itself. In the script, there's another scene after the bridge climax where Jeff and Amy are back at the farm talking to the FBI. The film finishes with a line by Amy, next time we fly. This was deemed out of place and dropped.
I think Breakdown is a really underrated movie with some excellent acting by the whole cast and it's great that it has been released on Blu-ray after all these years. If you like this type of content, why not consider subscribing? It's really appreciated. And hit the notification bell, then you'll know when my latest video is out. Thanks for watching guys, enjoy your movies. Bye!